Hey, did they tell you guys that there's one of our senior monks coming next Thursday? No? Oh, well, you're in for a treat. One of the senior members of ISKCON, of the Hare Krishna movement, his name is Radhanath Swami. Some of you may have heard of him. He's a renowned author and monk. He walked by foot. I think he took some buses also when he was about 20 years old from, uh, from actually from Chicago. Then he got himself to, to the UK. Then he got himself to uh, the, whatever you call it, the mainland there. Uh, and he walked all the way to India. And he had no visa, he had no passport, and he used just to just walk. He was from the Pakistani side. He used to walk to the immigration, whatever you call it, on the Indian side. Now, India and Pakistan are fighting like anything. And here's this skinny little guy walking up. They said, you know, where's your visa? Where's your... Nothing. They said, you can't get in. And he just came every day. And after about a month, they said, ah, oh, go on. And they just let him in. He lived in the Himalayas, or the Himalayas, as they say here in the West. I mean, he's, he's a very far out personality and deeply realized and deeply kind. So that is, we're not, as it tends to be with sadhus, we are not, um, hey, look at that. A snack come with it? He's not, if I like. Um, he's not, uh, it's not 100%, we're, what are we at, Balaran, 80%? <laughs> that he's coming. Oh, yeah. I'd say we're about 80%. 85. So. 85? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up in this Tapas. Is it on now? All right. I told you I need a brain. Today we're going to talk about loneliness, a common, quiet condition of humankind. Namo Om. This is a prayer to my spiritual master that I may say something in his line that pleases him. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tanamane Namaste Saraswati Deide Gauravani Pacharani Nir Visesha Sunyavadi Paskachada Satarani Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dwaita Gadada Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, we'll get back to loneliness. And there's a reason I'm telling this story. Because hopefully, if I remember, I'll knit it back in. My teacher, my guru, the founder of the Hare Krishna. He gives an analogy. And the train was coming for the first time to a village in India. Believe it or not, steam train, coal burning train. And the villagers had never seen a train. So, hey, you know, it's the latest news. Everybody turns out to see it arrive. And as is often the fact in developing world, it was late. They say IST means Indian Standard Time. Anyone who's been to India, what does IST mean? It means nobody knows, doesn't it? That's what it actually, or they call it Indian Stretchable Time, you know? IST means, oh, pack a lunch, man, <laughs> you know, IST. So uh, it was coming IST, Indian Standard Time. 
And so, you know, people have lives, they have things to do, they're, you know, they're not, so everybody clears out. They say, yeah, I'll read about it in the paper tomorrow. They can tell me all about it. And there's three people left. So, uh, three guys. And way off in the distance, they hear, woo, 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 woo. One of the guys says, hey, he wants to get home for dinner. He says, oh, yeah, that's a train. I've experienced the train. And he leaves. Now, it's a fact. He's experienced the train, right? There's no, there's no doubt about that. An aspect of it, please note. So there's two guys left. So they wait and wait and wait. And then around the, uh, by this time it's nighttime, and around the corner, uh, along with the whistle, there's a light. You know, there's, a, there's the old joke, if, if you see light at the end of the tunnel, it's a train coming at you. So you know, the, the trains. So the second guy says, hey, I've experienced the train. It's a whistle and a light. He goes home. It's, it's a fact. He's experienced the whistle and the light. But the third guy's a little more patient, a little more perceptive. He says, you know, it's got to be coming from somewhere. And he hangs in, and he sees the train itself pull out. And all the people get off. There's a light. He sees the whole picture. So the train is realized or experienced in progressively more full aspects. The whistle, okay, that's an aspect of the train, but it's only a narrow band. A little fuller is the whistle and the light. But the full experience is when you see the train and the, all the different compartments or bogies as they call them in India, all the different whatever you call them, and all the different people get off. That person fully knows the train. So with that, oh, we need a clock. Ah, I just need a, again, I need a brain. We'll be ready to go. Okay, so I made a few notes because I've been thinking about this. Um, we'll get back there, don't worry. The, I remember my father was talking to him, he's passed away long gone. Who knows, reincarnation, he may be sitting in this room. Hey, Pops, you know, <laughs> you never know. So uh, the um, he was talking to himself one day, as most of us do at some point in time. So I said, hey, Dad, who are you talking to? He said, myself. I said, why? He said, I'm the only person who understands me. And then his wife said, and he's the only one who will listen, you know. <laughs> So, but it is a fact that we all want to be loved and we want to be appreciated. We want to have someone who, you know, we've all got our private self and we've got our face we present to the world, you know. I mean... We have an Oprah minute moment here, but you know, everybody, you know, maybe potato chips in bed or, you know, you secretly steal from the church box. I don't know what. But, you know, we've all got, we've got a way we like the world to see us and what we like to be, what we aspire to be. And then, you know, certainly speaking for myself, we fall short sometimes or much of the time. So, but there's that duality between a, a personal, uh, public persona and our internal persona. There's our external world. Everybody, when you go on Facebook, which I avoid like the plague, but that's your choice, um, you know, on social media, do people put a post, I mean, I imagine they do in some chats, but do people say, you know, I'm really miserable, my life sucks, and, and I'm just getting kicked. No, they always say, hey, I'm having a great time, and here's the photos of this and that. And there's what's called fear of missing out. We've talked about it before. Because when you, when, you, when you think that's reality, everybody else is having a great time. They're all down at the beach, or they're at you know, PB, making fools of themselves, or, you know, on the, whatever it is, you know. And hey, you know what? I'm not there. And they didn't even invite me. So... The, what is our internal, who, I mean, this is extreme, but I, I forget who it was, I think it's Thoreau, says, 
most people lead lives of quiet desperation. I mean, that's an extreme. But there's an internal world and there's an external world. And at least from this side, we'd all like to find people looking for a soulmate. Who will know me as I really am? Not what I, <laughs> not what I pretend to be, but what I actually am. And will still love me. I mean, that's pretty much a core human goal. Or if they really knew me, they wouldn't love me. There's low self-esteem issues. There's all kinds of stuff stewing around. Um, and even if, I mean, not to be too macabre, but even if you get a, that perfect soulmate, what's ticking? Tick, tick, tick. Time I am. Krishna says in the Gita, the devastator of all things, you know. My daughter was showing me her wedding pictures. She's 49 now, you know. She says, you know, everybody she who got married, they all the girls starved themselves so they could fit into the wedding dress and have a great photo, you know. She said, For, you know, forget it now, you know. So time is that great changer of all things. You may still love somebody, but they've moved on. You know that famous line, we'll always be friends. I mean, wave goodbye. That's the end of that baby, you know. So uh, the there is an angst within the heart. And what to do about that? So because I wanted to take some questions, um, I'll say this. I was on a walk with my spiritual man. I'm going to go theological on you, and this is where everybody thinks, oh, well, I'll just say it. I was on a morning walk with a number of devotees, with my teacher, my spiritual master, and he was quietly chanting to himself. Sometimes he would talk, sometimes he would chant. You know, we have these beads that we chant on for nice meditation. So he was in a reflective mood. And then all of a sudden he stopped, put his cane down, turned to us, and he said, I know you're all atheists, but there really is Krishna. And just turned around and kept right on walking. You were all like, okay, you know, what's that all about? Because he called us out on it. But the fact of the matter is, and we can talk about it logically, we can talk about it scientifically, we can go at it in so many. The simplest point is wherever you, everybody talks about laws of physics. Material nature is moving according to the laws of nature. Okay. But what do they say? Ask, ask why five times? Dig a little further. Laws mean there's got to be a lawmaker. There's got to be a law enforcer. I was trained in marine biology, believe it or not. <laughs> Krishna saved me. Um, so... Uh, Everything is order, there's pattern, there's symmetry, there's interdependent systems. It's profound, the delicate da dance of interbalance. And it all happened by chance. So at least it's logical, at least it's worth pursuing. I don't want to go too far, but there's a, there's a system in logic called Occam's Razors. O Occam's Razor? Occam's Razor is that process which has the least and simplest steps is probably the one that's going to work and probably true. The more complicated you make a thing, the more steps, the more intermediaries, the more it's, you know, it's much more logical to conclude that behind this order universe, there's some kind of intelligence, something's going on. And the fact of the matter is that friend that we're looking for, that personality who knows us, Krishna's got a name. Uh, Krishna is the, what's called super soul. There's the, the Kato Upanishad, one of our source books, uh, gives an example. It says in a tree, picture a fruit tree, picture a fruit orchard. That's even better. Picture a fruit orchard. And picture a bird flying from tree to tree to tree to tree, tasting the fruit. Picture another bird 
flying with it, just as a friend, giving good advice, saying, nah, that's bitter, that won't work, in or out. Try this or try that, you know? So it's described in Kata Upanishad that there's in the heart, there's us, the individual soul. That's the bird flying from tree to tree, looking for some fruit. Where am I going to find happiness? Where am I going to find satisfaction? Where am I going to find fulfillment? That's the one bird flying from fruit tree to fruit tree. There's, that's called the Atma. You've probably heard the word before, Atma or Self. There's what's called Paramatma. Paramatma is Krishna, the Supreme Lord, traveling in everyone's heart. An example, again, from the Padma Purana, one of our... If I have a... The sun is there, one object, right? But I can put out a bunch of water pots, and the sun will be reflected in each of the pots. You follow? It's still there as its original object, but it's reflected in every pot. In the same way, the Supreme Lord, we say Krishna, people say God, Jehovah, whatever, the Absolute. But we say Krishna. That's another class, why we say Krishna. But Krishna... The Supreme Lord who's maintaining all things, created all things, sustains all things, is also like the sun is in one place, but reflected in all the pots. He's in everyone's heart. Krishna, the Supreme, but, you know, they call it conscience and all that, you know, good advice, inspiration. That's a whole other class. But actually the Supreme Lord is writing in everyone's heart. And there's another name and he's watching, he's witnessing, he's trying to help. That's the friend we're actually looking for. There's a name for Krishna called Suridam. It's called Suridam Sarvabhutanam from the Gita. Krishna's the best friend. There's different types of friends. There's casual friends. There's acquaintances. There's people who are appear to be friendly, but they want something from you. There's, as long as you scratch their back, they'll scratch your back. There's all different types of friends. Sanskrit's a fantastic language. All different types of friends. But the best friend is called Suridam. Suradam means they only want your best. A well-wisher who only wants to see you happy and succeed and fulfilled. That's the best type of friend. And Krishna says, Suradam Sarvabhutanam. Krishna is the friend in the heart of every living entity. That's the friend we're actually looking for. Now let me give you two quick, three quick examples and we'll be done. Um, you know, I was back to the point of the, the train. What you guys hear, what everybody hears, is that ultimately the absolute is impersonal. It's some kind of white light or force or, I mean, one guy saying, well, if you took everything in a big ball and rolled it up, that'd be God. You know, or, or you know, we're all ultimately, we're all just one great cosmic force. Like you had, this is the... This is an example you get all the time. It's not true, but there's the example that you have, a, you have the ocean and it splashes against the rock and all the individual drops float and then they all fall back into the ocean. They all become one ocean, no individuality. Hey, sounds pretty romantic, but one of the greatest, we're talking about loneliness. And do you think, although we all want to find a friend, we all want to have relationships, that's the very nature of personhood. I'm not a number. Don't treat me impersonally. I'm an individual. That's the very nature of self. And yet this idea that somehow or other we're all going to merge into a great ocean with no individuality, with no personality, with no relationship. I mean, that sounds like, what is solitary confinement? It's, a, it's, it's worse than hell. But it's presented as what? Because there's so much suffering and difficulty that you think, oh, geez, just put me out of my misery. Let me just merge, find my home and home. But what if that's not the truth? Again, that's an aspect of the Supreme. Just like the train, a whistle is an aspect. The, the consciousness that's di directing and moving all things, that's another. That's like the, the light and the whistle. But seeing the form and seeing the people, that's the full understanding. So yes, there is an impersonal aspect of the Supreme Lord. Yes, there is the Supreme, they call it the Holy Ghost in, the, in, in Christian theology, that's moving and directing and guiding and sustaining all things. Fine, that's true. We're not negating that. But we're saying the full, complete, comprehensive understanding is that there's also a Supreme Person. 
Why does the shadow of the hand have five fingers? It's not a trick question. Here's a big hint. Why does the shadow have five fingers? Hey, the original object has five fingers. We've got personalities. We've got relationships. We have emotions. How is it logical that the source of all of us has no form, has no relationship, has no personality, has no interaction? Share with me the seamless logic of that one. Rather, his form, the form of Krishna, the supreme form, must be unlimitedly beautiful. They say, how can the infinite have a form? Well, what if that infinite form is infinite? Can expand everywhere, hear all things, taste all things, cause all things, is in everyone's heart. Wow, that's something to... So the point I wanted to make, and, we'll, and this is the last thing, back to the theme of loneliness and what we're about, what the Hare Krishna movement is about. We are about, and not just the Hare Krishna movement, the teachings, the guidance, the realization of all great sages from time immemorial. You know what the word yoga means? It means to fix, to join, to add that thing that has been broken. So the to restore our realization of the existence, to recreate, to reestablish that friendship with the Supreme Lord, to realize it, to actually experience it. My spiritual master said, you think you're sitting on the floor? I'm sitting in the hand of Krishna. You ever seen it? He saw that. What is that? There? I don't know if it's still around. It used to be an advertisement for Allstate. Allstate? Yeah, you're in good hands with Allstate. You know, and it shows the hand, the house, and the faithful dog Fido, and the nuclear family. My spiritual master saw that. And he said, Yokesh mam bahami hum, which is a verse from the Gita. How Krishna sustains, maintains, brings to us. I was sitting in a room with Prabhupada with a number of devotees in our Los Angeles temple. You can still go there and see his quarters and his desk. It's just like it was when he was there. <clears throat> and it was a relatively cold day for California. I think it had dipped to 50. Everyone was deeply stressed. And it's just like they say, we were, you know, it was a windy and stormy day. And you know how the clouds part sometimes? and a shaft of light will come down like a spotlight or, you know. Well, that happened. And Prabhupada was sitting here. We were all sitting here, and there was a rectangle window behind him. And the, that shaft of light came right through the window, and it even more framed it. And it was just like a movie theater, you know, there was a, or a, a theatrical a stage. There was a spotlight of warm sunshine right on Srila Prabhupada. We all got sweaters and scarves, and we are all capped. So we were literally and figuratively in darkness. And Srila Prabhupada, was the, my teacher, was, found, was bathed in this warm light. And picking up the mood, he turned to us and said, yes. He said, someday you will feel this sunlight like your lovers embrace. Realize it. I'm sitting in the hands of Krishna. I've, Krishna says in the Gita, I'm the pure taste of water. When you're thirsty, what works? When you're out in the desert, you say, hey, I'm like a nice uh, Starbucks, you know? You just want water. You just want a glass of water. And if you think of that when you're tired and you're thirsty, how do you feel when you get a glass of water? I mean, you feel refreshed. You feel relieved. Your brain becomes clear. Whoa, did I need that? What if, because Krishna says, I'm the pure taste in the water. I'm the light of the sun and the moon. I'm the original fragrance of the earth. If we were feeling, which is possible, which in fact, throughout time immemorial, great saints, sages, and monks have experienced it. And they all say, come on, you can too. Isn't that a unique purview of me? Because I lived in a cave in the Himalayas, and the rest of you guys, tough luck. It's for everyone. So we'll end here, but the simple point we're making is that if one, I shouldn't even say if, when one realizes that the presence of the Supreme Lord everywhere and in all things and in my heart and is my best suhidam, best friend, where's the question of loneliness? Where's the question of feeling insufficient? Where's the question of low self-esteem? It all evaporates. And the process for realizing that 
is what we're teaching here in the Hare Krishna movement. And it begins, if you, if I say Vaishnav, yeah, you see, he perked right up. This is Vaishnav Prabhu, nice devotee. Perked right up. So when you call, Bhakti Chris, hey, you know, if I call you by your name, so what do you think happens? The Supreme Lord who has loved us since time immemorial, when we call out the name of the Supreme Lord, do you think he ignores it? Do you think he's callous? He's just ungrateful? So that's the Hare Krishna mantra is calling out the Krishna. So there it is. And the science, the art, the practice, the steps, that's what we're all about. That's what we're teaching here. So thank you for sitting so patiently. A little over time, but not too bad. Now, where, wait, hang on, hang on, mate. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I gave the signal, but not quite. Um, where do we take Prashad? Outside? No, but where's it set up? So this, is it ready to go? Can we, do they need to be put in gear? Somebody should go and give them the signal, hey, roll the train, because we've got hungry people here. And what do they say? You know, we'll put on the, we'll fiddle for time. Says, so why they're getting set up? Don't worry, you're not losing any time. Why they're getting set up? Anybody got any question? Any? I'll tell you how this works, by the way. Nobody wants to ask a question. Everything say, hey, that's not a good question, or I'm too shy, or, you know. And they think, nah, somebody else will ask. Everybody's thinking the person next to them is going to ask a question. I guarantee you that's what's happening. And all it takes is one brave soul to say, you know what, what about this? And everybody thinks, well, I, I, I can ask you. And the whole thing flows. So we need to, and don't feel on the spot, but does anyone have, any brave soul have a question? Don't be shy. Yes, thank you, O oh brave soul. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. I have so far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. When I'm at home and I'm praying or chanting, I find it um, very mesmerizing that when I chant Hare Krishna, I get goosebumps all over my body. I also chant other mantras, too. I'm just curious scientifically to question things. And I find that the goosebumps come all over my body when I, when I chant Hare Krishna. I find deepness in the other mantras. You know, I, I find them, you know, other tools. But why is that? that you find some sp special if, effect in the chanting of Hare Krishna? Yeah, like when I'm, even when I'm like I'm teaching a yoga class or something, or if like I, when I end it, I always seal it with like singing to everyone Hare Krishna. Good it's like you. something that like, I f even though they're probably not all followers of Hare Krishna, like I always bless that, you know, the end with Good Hare Krishna. Let me ask you a question. Um, and they have done all kinds of studies. I mean, they've done them at Harvard, they've done it at UC Medical, I mean, um, University of Chicago, different. And, you know, you could say, well, okay, I love Coca-Cola. I'm, I'm going to get back to your question, but it's akin to it. I love Coca-Cola. And when I chant Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, I become peaceful. I become, my mind becomes, right, what, what, you know, Maui, 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 because I, you know, I remember being on the beach, you know, whatever it may be, you know. But it's not the same effect. That when it's actually something called a spiritual sound vibration. When I touch fire, does it matter that I understand, oh, it's an exothermic reaction. And it, does, does, does the fire, it has its effect no matter who touches it in knowledge or not. It's the nature of the thing. The name of the Supreme, the name of God, the name of Krishna, it had, whether it's Rama or whether you say Yahweh or whether you say Jehovah, any bona fide name of God mm. is spiritual. It is spiritual. It is in the absolute world. And if I say water, 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 I just get thirsty. If I chant, the, the, the sound and the object are not the same. Mm. But in the spiritual world, the sound and the object are the same thing. Mm. When we chant the holy name of the Supreme Lord, we are actually the Supreme Lord is present. Now there's a quality of utterance, there's levels of purity, there's all kinds of you know, variations, but the principle is the same. So when you say Krishna, 
it has, a, just like touching fire, it has its efficacious or potent purifying. It's called a papavidyam. Mm. A papavidyam is a Sanskrit term which means the holy name can never be contaminated. Mm. And it also purifies. Mm -hmm. Like the perfect. sun, you can, never pure, you can never contaminate the sun. Mm -hmm. And yet the sun can shine on a urinal mm -hmm. and completely cleanse it in due course of time. Mm -hmm. So it's a special transcendental sound vibration. Thank you. I Is think that it's okay? a, yeah. I think it's the purification. It must be the purification. It works both ways. Yeah, because I feel like there's a resonance in it. Good for you. You know. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Hare Krishna. Stay with it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you had some, you had a question. Yeah. That was a nice question, though. Hare Krishna. Same to you. Uh, okay. So my question is. So you know how some people say we are all one. And then I told that to a monk, well, someone asked that to a monk one day, and the monk was like, no, we are not all one. So my question is but yeah, that. <laughs> so are we all one? I'm confused uh, about the concept, we are all one, because then there were, that monk was uh, like, we are not all one. So then I got confused. I like that monk. What's his name? <laughs> she was right here. Yeah. Okay, well, there it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so, um, you know, that. I don't want to go too philosophical on you. Not that you wouldn't understand, but you know, just how much time do we have? And how much can people absorb? Especially when dinner is coming. Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a Sanskrit term called a chinta beta beta tatwa, which means simultaneously one and different. Stretch your mind around that. Simultaneously one and different. And the example is we're all American, I mean, or whatever you are, we're all human beings that spread it out. So we're one in one sense, and yet we're all individuals in another sense. Another way of looking at it is the sun and the sunlight, they're the same, aren't they? I can say the sunlight is in my room. I can say, oh, hey, the sun's in my, the sun's in my room, shining in my room. But really, is the sun globe in my room? I mean, crispy critters. <laughs> That's not happening, you know? So th although it's one, it's different. The sun globe and the sun rays are different, yet they're one. We're all one. In the, we are all eternal spirit soul. We're all individual eternal souls. So uh, the Vedic nature, is, it divides it into two categories. There's sat and asat. Just like <laughs> when you're sort for... Anyway, um... There's eternal and there's temporary. And sages look at the world that way. There's sat and asat. That which is temporary, don't waste a whole lot of time on it. That which is eternal, that what's, that's what matters. So there's oneness in that we are all individual souls. You follow? We're, there's that, there's oneness. Um, when you see a, when you go on the road, dr driving your, your car, and you go on the freeway, it says merging traffic. What does that mean? You all pop into one big car, poof, 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 like Pac-Man, and everybody's in a giant car with one driver, and we're all in the trunk? I don't know. What does it mean, merging traffic? But they're all going in the same direction, isn't it? They're all... So merging means to merge into the service of the Supreme Lord, merge into the idea of... of that we're all eternal living entities. We are all a family. So that's a type of merging, but it's not a loss of individuality. That loss of individuality is, is, is the, my guru called it spiritual suicide. He, he gives an analogy. I mean, he could be extreme sometimes. Um, suppose I go to the doctor. Suppose my little child has a fever, and I take my son or my daughter to the doctor, and he has a fever. Doctor pulls out a gun, bam, shoots my daughter dead. <laughs> Pay me. What? The doctor says, well, the fever's gone. <laughs> you know, I mean, huh? So, okay, it's difficult. We were talking about loneliness. It's difficult in this world to find real love, real truth, real beauty, lasting beyond time. To find a, a, a station that continu continuous happiness, everything's under the influence of time. If you study the mind, it's either hankering or lamenting. Oh, I want, I want, I want. 
oh, I lost, I lost, I lost. You know, I mean, where is the steady, steady state of happiness? So that's, I don't want to pile down too much, but we are all eternal individuals. And the oneness is the realization of that. Great sages, anyway, there's so many examples, but that's enough for now. We could talk a little more. Is that okay? Okay. What's up with the Prashad? Is it ready to roll? I know there's, there's questions, but I don't want to be hungry. I want them to don't want them to be hungry. Okay, just now coming. Yes. Hare Krishna. Um, what is the significance of 16 rounds of jap? It's a bare minimum. But why 16? Like, what's I'll get the there significance in a minute. I'm the just number? playing around. I'll get there. Um, my my spiritual master. When he took initiation, the standard was 64 rounds. When he came to America, he introduced, that takes about four hours, something like that, to chant. It means you have to go to bed early, and you have to get up early, and you get there, there goes the, you know, whatever's the latest on Netflix. Um, so, it's a bare, when he came to the West, you know, people were, so many things were so easily, I mean, people, what is it, how long can people, what's the average attention span? Somebody should Google it for me. Is it really six seconds? We're right up there with a gnat, aren't we? <laughs> and everybody's looking at their phone. I mean, if it, I forget, they've done studies when they take away people's phones and they actually have the same physiological responses as going cold turkey off a drug. So, I mean, it's far out. Um, so it's been reduced to a minimum of 16 rounds. But the, like we have, a, you could say it, it's a division of 64. It's a division of 108, like there's 108 Vedas. And if we chant on beads, anyone have an exhibit A? Anyone got a set of Japa Mala? There's the Krishna Mala, the Krishna bead, and there's 108 and that's sometimes compared to 108 Vedas, different Upanishads, different Vedas, Exhibit A. Hold up your Krishna bead. So when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, I mean, whatever works for you, but, um, you know, everything comes from Krishna, everything leads to Krishna, so that's why 108. The Vedas, you'll realize Krishna. If you want to get really esoteric, there's 108 primary gopis. From that, it comes down to 64. Ultimately, there's 16. That's equal to 16. Ultimately, it comes to 8. Ultimately, it comes to 4. Ultimately, it comes to 2. Ultimately, it comes to Srimati Radharani. But that's way over where we're at. That's a taste. But whatever it is, start. You know, the mind is far out. Well, what about this? What about, just start. You chant. How are we doing now for Bhushad? All right. Do we have one other question? But, but I, I did, I'll take it, and then we'll be done. No, no, but I want to say one other thing. There was a, f a friend of mine, a fellow monk, and there was a Gunagurai Maharaj Goswami. Some of you may know him. He's a good friend of mine. And there was someone who used to try to live in the temple and fall. His name was uh, Irving. Anyone remember Irving? Yeah, people who have been around. Now, Ir the problem with Irving, he, it has a happy ending, by the way. Remind me to tell you the happy ending. But he could not resist alcohol. He would come, he'd dry out, he'd do well as a devotee, he'd live in the temple, he'd, and then he'd just fall back. You know, and he'd, he'd be in, he'd be out, and in and out. And he'd been gone for some time. I, we were, sometimes we set up a nice Indian pandal tent, nice colorful tent, we chant out in the park. And there's a book table there, you know what. And Irving stumbled up to us. And he had, you know, he had his pants on backwards, inside out. He had leaves in his hair. You know, he was like, you know, just really been worked. He had that hot, you know, smoker's hack cough. You know, I mean, he was just really in a miserable state. So Guna Grimash, my good friend, said, you know, Irv, just come back to the temple. You know, we'll help you. We'll take care. You just, you're, you look at your condition. He said, nah, nah, I just can't do it, can't do it. So Maharaj said, well, at least stop smoking, because he was hacking and coughing. It was going to kill him. 
Nah, he can't do that. So Marge said, where are you living? He was living in Balboa Park. He said, where are you living in Balboa Park? He said, I'm living in the women's bathroom at Balboa's Park. And Gunnar Grimarsh said, at least move into the men's bathroom. <laughs> and Irving said, I can do that. He could do that, you know. And by little, inc he did it. And by little increments, you know, he stopped smoking his cigarettes, one cigarette a day, he started coming. And he actually moved back into the temple, dried out, and he went on what we have called, what we call Padayatra. It's a walking tour all over India. And he went walking all over India with the Hare Krishna monks, with Lokanath Swami and the bull. Has a happy ending. So the reason I say that is just start. If you're not chanting Hare Krishna at all, say Hare Krishna in the morning when you say one mantra. You know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Anybody time that? Anybody the loser for that? One, you know, and then just increase, increase. As you, and you will find that your taste increases, your clarity of mind increases, your compassion increases, your tolerance increases. So many things. Okay? All right, so one last question will be done. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. So what is das, the... Das, Anur, das, go ahead. What is the... Uh, how would you... I mean, the result of your activities, is it... How would you know if is it caused by your minute independence or Krishna's arrangement? Well... There's someone who's been reading Bhagavad Gita. That's a nice question. Um, like so many things in this world, they are not black and white. We tend to want to think in binary terms. When things go well, just see my intelligence. When things go wrong, oh, God, it's his fault. You know, we take the credit, but shh, deliver the blame onto others. The fact of the matter is, our Radhanath Swami, who's going to be coming here next Thursday, absolutely, he gave a simple example. Anybody ever been out in the Midwest with their silos, you know, with a grain storage silo? Oh, you can understand it, you know. So, you can see them blowing wheat into the silo. You know, they, the trucks, they're shh, it's going up and it's going into the top of the silo. You can open up the silo sometimes at the bottom and oats will come out or corn. Oh, it's a magic silo. It's turning oats into corn. Is that a fact? Is it a magic silo? What's happening? Hmm? No farmers here? Exactly. Last crop, they stored the corn. I mean, usually they use individual silos, but sometimes they don't. So what you put in last year, you're putting in oats now, but what you're getting out is the corn that you put in last year. So whatever we've done in the past, it, it, there's the, it's in seed stage, there's different stages of karma. There's fructification, there's, there's all different stages of karma. But what we, we are getting, buy now, pay later, we are getting what we did in the past is happening to us now. That's the general principle. As you sow it, so shall you reap from Jesus. I mean, there it is. But simultaneously, there's another factor. I said it's not black or white. It's not binary. Krishna's mercy is always there. Krishna's always trying to help us. He's giving in the heart. Oh, that's a bad idea. I mean, I really, you really don't want to do that. And we just push it aside and I'll have that third or fourth beer, you know. I'll go out with this prayer, whatever it may be. Ah, cheat, nobody will see. Sun and the moon are witnesses. So... There's always the benevolent hand of the Supreme Lord as a secondary or additional or auxiliary factor. So there's our own karma and the results, our own activities and the results of that. The seeds we've planted in the past fructifying now. But there's also the causeless mercy of the Supreme Lord. There's mercy of saintly people. There's all kinds of vectors that are determining the course of the thing. Like billiard balls, you know, bing, 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 one's bouncing it. It's not a black or white either or. But a major factor is our own activities. Is that okay? Yeah. We live in a complicated world. Therefore, the simplest thing is just chant Hare Krishna and surrender to Krishna. The Gordian knot is cut. So we should in there. Yeah? 
They're ready now? Okay, we'll in now. Nice and and Damodar Prabhu wants to say something. A nice round of applause for Maharaj. Thank you for inviting us. I feel so much better now. My self-esteem has been restored. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just a couple of announcements before we end. We're actually throwing the most anticipated highlight summer event Ach. this Sunday. We're going to be doing a meditation hike and pilgrimage to oh. the Laguna Beach Temple, where, as he had mentioned, Radhanath Swami will be the keynote speaker. So that's going to be this Sunday. If you want to sign up, speak to me after the event. What time? We will be carpooling from Pacific Beach at 1030. So if you want. And you re he reminded me of something else. <laughs> Is that it for that one? You may yeah. have something else oh, yeah. to say. There's something called the LA Ratha Yatra, which is a huge festival we put on in Los Angeles. The LA Times, that record of truth, uh, the LA Times called it a spiritual Barnum and Bailey's circus. There's all kinds of displays. There's free prashadam. There's every kind of food item you can offer. There's a gift shop. There's different question and answer booths. There's a, there's a, a what do you call it? There's a, a cultural performance and bhajans and chanting. And there's this huge, per you ever heard the word juggernaut? An unstoppable, powerful force. Juggernaut, you know, in American language, juggernaut. It comes from juggernaut, from this festival, these huge carts. They're, I don't know how tall. 50 feet, there it is. And they're, all, they're made all out of wood and, and they're pulled by the crowd. It's just an unbelievable festival. So that is August. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. No argument there. So uh, it's uh, Sunday the 4th. You can check with Balaram how to get up there. You can carpool. Oh, gee, sorry about that. August, <laughs> there you go. August 7th. Next, the first Sunday in August. Okay. So, yeah. We'll have a bus going up that way so you can ride with us. And uh, yeah, if you like you to, to make reserve a seat, it's not automatic. You've got to reserve a seat. You have to reserve a seat. Right. You can speak to Balam Prabhu about that. This is a completely free event. If you'd like to make any contribution, it is appreciated. There's a donation box right here. Thank you all for coming tonight. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.